This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI Special Agent and Chief of the Counterintelligence Behavioral Analysis Program, Robin Dreek. The trial of Karen Reed, well, it's, uh, it's, it's at a standstill, really. We have a hung jury uh, as of right now. What's going to happen? We'll find out more about that coming up on June 22nd at the next status hearing, whether or not the Commonwealth is going to say, let's try this again, maybe on lesser charges, or maybe we just don't have a chance at this. Let's just call it a day. We'll find out then. Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program and author of many wonderful books, including this one, <laughs> Sizing People Up. Go get it wherever books are sold. Um, Robin, I, I got to ask you, um, were you surprised by uh, the jury coming back and forth so many times saying we're at an impasse and eventually uh, Judge uh, Beverly said, OK, we're done. Um, not surprised. It, it, well, <laughs> boy, it's always, always an interesting you know, thing to say. I didn't know how it was going to go because, as we've said numerous times on here, I didn't like the charges. I didn't mm -hmm. like the way things were done. I, I There's a lot of things here I didn't like. I didn't know how not liking it would play out. So that's the part that's not surprising is the result of, I think, bad charges, bad conduct by a lot of people – uh, led to a mystery. Uh, I mean, a, a mistrial. And it, it's unfortunate because it's going to cost uh, a lot of time, a lot more money, and there's still no justice for the family. Um, and it's just going to be another go. I, I got a feeling it's going to be another go around again. It was interesting watching everyone's expressions in the courtroom uh, when that was read aloud. Uh, you saw kind of some relief there. You also saw frustration it, it, it's sitting in that place of nobody knows what's going to happen next. And sometimes that's the worst place to be without mm -hmm. having any sort of direction uh, going forward. That family has to be um, in a tough spot right now. Uh, it, it's uh, it's fascinating because I'm wondering, are we going to see another trial? Is the Commonwealth going to even try this again? Because if they do, it doesn't erase all the players in this. It's the same people, even if it does go for lesser charges, we're still going to see Proctor again. We're still going to see basically the same things being brought up. I don't know if they're going to continue down the road of uh, that there was a conspiracy and he was beat up in the house. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, I think some of the most damaging people were those officers that were just having horrible conduct in all of this. What do you think? Yeah, and it's still not going to rectify the drunken memories that are inaccurate. And I really thought about this a lot in the last couple of days. I think one of the things that really hurt, besides the obvious uh, confirmation biases, I think, that are playing out here uh, of the jurists, yeah. uh, either you're pro-law enforcement, anti-law enforcement, pro-Karen Reed, anti-Karen Reed. And you're going to, when you're consuming information through that very solid optic and lens, and you don't have charges that completely fit your own personal narrative, it, it, it ends up like it does. Yeah. But what really kind of struck me again was there's a great opportunity – I thought when they're looking at the text messages of Karen Reed's of that night when she's in, in insistently going back, you know, looking for John O'Keefe, you know, where are you? I have your kids. Um, I mean, it really showed a compelling attachment she had to him, which could have been really good. But then it showed a completely unhinged side of her, yeah. which made her very unlikable. Um, and so I think it really highlighted that. The entire group is an unhealthy mess of chaos. Mm -hmm. And so it's very hard to take a side as a jurist uh, if if the charges aren't clear that you, like it's not quite fitting what you saw presented before you. So it's hard to put it in a box and everyone involved is pretty unlikable. Yeah. You know, and so it's it makes it a really hard muddled thing to deal with. And also what when you present your defendant as a certain way, and then you actually see the curtain pulled back and you see her in a in a in a very true organic light, you're like, ooh, that's not quite what defense was saying or portrayed her as uh as quite the victim of the this the whole system. You know, this is, you know, you can kind of understand that behavior, not agree with the result of 
of, you know, potentially backing into her boyfriend, but you can kind of see this woman's unhinged at times and that's just crazy. So see, even just sitting here describing, you see how muddled and yeah. convoluted it all gets and, and then bleh, mistrial. And, and a trial shouldn't be about likability, but at the end of the day, everybody is human. Everybody's going to get their, their, their confirmation biases and all different things. And, and that's what is think, what I think is part of the problem with how, um, this trial played out how just how so many things in our society continue to play out. It's either you're in this camp or you're in that camp. It's black or white. And that's not life. It, it, it shouldn't ever be a I'm pro law enforcement or against law enforcement. It should just be I'm pro competent law enforcement, which I think anyone really would be. Uh, I'm pro competent behavior of, of individuals uh, interacting with one another. And the problem is with this, this all falls into the gray area uh, on, on everything. So it's hard to get a good grasp here on, well, there, there did, clearly didn't seem to be very a lot of competent uh, behavior on the part of law enforcement in this. There wasn't a lot of competent behavior on the part of, of the parties involved in, in any of this. Uh, and it just all goes to, to chaos. So it's hard to, to expect a jury to make heads or tails out of any of this when everybody is, you know, all over the place, just the same way you described. Uh, and and I, I don't see a second round of this being any better. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.